What's up Planeswalkers, it's your boy K-Dog. Got another fun video for you guys. This one we'll be taking a look at a Johnny's Insight. It's a Bant uh, aggro enchantment list, if you will. And uh, the inspiration for this deck was around this guy right here, Nyx Herald. It's a 2-3 for 2 and a green. Enchantment creature, Centaur Shaman. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target enchanted creature or enchantment creature you control gets plus 1, plus 1 and gains trample until end of turn. All right, so not really running other enchantment creatures in this deck, but we are focusing on creatures that are uh, aggressive and some enchantments that allow us to be aggressive. And then what uh, are some good ways, some payoffs to get uh, trample and the extra little uh, bo boost. Uh, so obviously a Johnny's pride mate was the first thing that came to mind. We've seen in the uh, Mono White Life Gain and Orzhov Life Gain decks, how Johnny's Pride Mate can get like super, super big. Uh, so we're not all in on that Life Gain strategy, but we have enough to actually build our Pride Mate to where it's relevant. We can get the Trample if we have all our pieces in play, and it can swing through for a ton of damage. Um, <clears throat> so we're running all four of Johnny's Pride Mate. And uh, some other Life uh, Gain enablers, of course, all four Healer's Hawk. Uh, just being a 1-1 one, one flyer for 1 on turn 1 is pretty decent in and of itself. It uh, boosts our pride mate, and then also we are playing some enchantments, obviously, so a nice evasive uh, threat to uh, enchant and get in for extra damage and also gain a bunch of life back. Uh, we're also going to be running 3 Spectral Sailors. It's a 1-1 one, one flyer for 1. Uh, nice little upside of being able to play it at flash speed, so we can just play it on our opponent's end step. And then uh, later on in the game, if we're uh, running low on resources, uh, we can pay for uh, instant speed to draw a card. So that's a really nice uh, all-star in this deck. Uh, we're also running three Ginger Boots. It's a 1-1 one, one with haste. Uh, three color deck, so just having a artifact colorless is uh, pretty sweet. So we can just get this down on turn one, whatever uh, our opening la lands are. And uh, being able to pay one to give it uh, can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste, so it's mostly unblockable. Uh, we probably won't use the sacrifice to gain life, but in certain matchups that may be relevant. Uh, you know, we could always bo boost our uh, Johnny's Pride Mate and things like that. Another way we can gain life is four Hushbringers. It's a one, two flying life linker for a two. And uh, the other powerful ability on this is creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. So it shuts down like those Jund uh, Sacrifice decks, uh, the Teamer or uh, Simic Elemental decks. Uh, so that's pretty powerful in itself. Uh, we don't have anything that uh, this affects, so uh, perfectly fits in uh, in our deck. Running uh, four Staggering Insights is our first enchantment payoff. An enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has lifelink and whenever this creature deals combat damage to your player draw a card so that's why we're running all these flyers so we get these uh, nice evasive threats and the ginger brute we can make it uh, essentially unblockable and then we can guarantee to get in for some damage gain a little bit of life and most importantly to draw a card so we can keep going uh, you know fix our land drops maybe uh, things like that uh, find more threats find uh, banishing light as our removal uh, so that's three Banishing Lights, just a nice utility removal spell. As an enchantment, we can exile target non land permanent and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. Uh, another little bit of uh, pseudo removal uh, tempo, really, is Brazen Borrower. Uh, just the two of, because the creature side at two blue can be a little tricky sometimes in our three color deck. But just being able to bounce something at instant speed on our opponent's side is super, super powerful to slow them down a little bit and to kind of help us. Uh, deal with anything that our opponent is doing. Creatures, planeswalkers, enchantments. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, Love Struck Beast. Uh, just super uh, great against uh, aggro matchups as having a 5-5 five, five for 3 mana makes a wonderful blocker, especially if as we're attacking through the air. Or uh, <clears throat> just be able to put more pressure on our opponent as we can create a 1-1 one, one on turn 1 if we don't have any of our other 1-drops. And then uh, on turn three, we get a 5-5 five, five down, and we can put our Staggering Insight on this, and Nyx Herald gives it Trample, and now we're swinging through for six Life Linking Trample damage, drawing cards, so that's pretty uh, sweet right there. And uh, 
top out our uh, curve here is uh, in the four drop slot. We have a three mantle of the wolf. It is four mana, and we are trying to keep our curve uh, pretty reasonable. So that's why just a three of. But with all of our uh, you know one ones and things like that, having a way to give our creatures plus four plus four is pretty sweet. It's another enchantment for our Nyx Herald. So we put this on anything, and then it gains trample. Uh, that's a lot of damage. Like on a Lovestruck Beast becomes a 9-9, nine, nine. the Nyx Herald gives it plus one, plus one in Trample. That's uh, pretty powerful right there. And uh, has a nice upside of when it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, we get two, two, two green wolf creature tokens. So even if our opponent has removal, we still get a couple creatures out of it. And uh, going over the mana base real quick, we got three basic planes, two island, two forest, and all the shock lands, four hallowed fountain, four temple garden, four breeding pool, and a little bit of fixing, we got one Temple of Mystery and three Fabled Passage. So we, don't, we want to be able to play uh, untapped in the early turns as much as possible. So we have no problem shocking in. We have enough life gain that it shouldn't really matter for the most part. And uh, going over the sideboard real quick. Uh, we got two Giant Killers since so many of our creatures are super small. We need some way to interact with the strong, powerful creatures, questing beasts and things like that. And so Giant Killer gives us a nice way to do that. As an instant speed, we can destroy a creature power 4 or greater. Or if it's uh, just on the board as a 1-2, we can pay 2 to tap target creature. Uh, another bit of removal is uh, Gideon's Triumph. 2 mana instant, target opponent sacrifices a creature that attacked or blocked this turn. And if we control Gideon Planeswalker, that player sacrifices 2 of those creatures instead. So this could be brought up if we just need like a, a extra removal against creature heavy matchups. But mostly it's there for uh, things like Dream Chawler or an enchanted Paradise Druid that has uh, Hexproof because its uh, Sentinel's Eyes has given it Vigilance, things like that. So that's mostly what Gideon's Triumph is here for. And against the Mono Red matchups, we have uh, three Cerulean Drakes. Uh, protection from Red against those decks is super, super powerful and just block their uh, creatures all day and not die. And uh, <clears throat> if we enchant this, it can swing through for a ton of damage and they can't block it. And especially if we have uh, Lifelink on it, then, yeah, there's not really much uh, Mono Red can do against us. And uh, we're also going to be running three Destiny Spinners as a 2-3 two, for 2. That's a pretty sweet deal right there. Creatures and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. So that's great against the uh, control and mid range type matchups. And especially with the uh, being able to play, pay 4 mana to target land you control becomes an XX Elemental Creature Token with Trample and Haste. And turn of turn, where X is the number of enchantments you control. So the Destiny Spinner is itself an enchantment, so it'll at least be, you know, a 1-1 one, one land, if nothing else. And uh, we'll probably have some other enchantments out at the same time. So just a nice extra little bit of value in those removal-heavy matchups. And Return to Nature as a 3 of, because there is so much artifacts, uh, enchantments, and uh, graveyard shenanigans going on. So we can get rid of, uh, you know, Croxa or Euro from the graveyard, so it can't be escaped. Uh, we can destroy any enchantments, Season of Growth, Sentinel's Eyes, all the glitters, things like that. Uh, even, you know, enchantment creatures, we can destroy them. And, uh, of course, there are some artifacts we want to destroy. Uh, Embercleave, I'm looking at you. And uh, topping out our uh, sideboard here is Gideon Blackblade. Just a super powerful uh, Planeswalker, 3 mana, 4 loyalty. It's a 4-4 four, four human soldier creature token on our turn. It's indestructible. We can plus one to give our creatures Vigilance, Lifelink, or Indestructible, or one of our creatures. And then if it sticks around a little bit, we can uh, exile target and online permanent for minus six. So just really great against the uh, control removal heavy matchups. All right, let's jump into some best of three and see how we do. There we go. <clears throat> All right, a Johnny is in sight and Arena Standard best of three. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you're at. So yeah, I always enjoy finding uh, cards and interactions that don't really see much play. And just trying to find a way to make them work. Alright, up against Finn Force. <clears throat> Alright, yeah, the sand seems pretty sweet. Shock in our uh, Hallowed Fountain so we can Spectral Sailor on their end step. Forest. 
And oh, collector. Okay, so probably a uh, gruel aggro. So Hushbringer could be decent on what they have. Although obviously, uh, I don't believe Riot is affected by Hushbringer. Okay, Leaf Kindred, so more of a mid rangey deck. And Ginger Brute. Uh, yeah, I think we'll just want to get our Pride Mate down and start uh, putting some counters on it. Fabled Passage. Alright, so we have double white, one green, one blue. Probably get a green source, I think. matters too much. Spellbreaker, sure. So the Pelt Collector becomes a 2-2. Two, two. The Spellbreaker is a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, yeah, Hushbringer shuts down the uh, Pelt Collector. That's pretty sweet. Maybe we'll get blue in case we find a brazen barley. And of course we draw an island. We can Hushbringer Ginger Brute and activate Ginger Brute. But then if we draw an enchantment next turn, then getting the Nyx Herald down uh, now could be pretty important. Gruel is super aggressive. So I think we'll uh, Snix Herald. We'll play our Ginger Root just to be mana efficient, and we'll attack in with our Flyers. Put another counter on our Pride Mate, and say go. And hope we draw an enchantment next turn. So then we can really go to town. Our opponent is now in Embercleave territory. So that's a little uh, scary. Three mountains, though. It's kind of uh, curious. No stomping ground, no temple. Living Twister. Okay. Not typically what you see in these gruel aggro lists. I mean, the five toughness is nice. Just to have down as a blocker, but. Otherwise, these gruel lists are all about just uh, power and attacking. Okay, they have a uh, Domri's Ambush, yep. Well, they don't like our Nyx Herald, so that has to be gotten rid of. I guess the attacking with the Pelt Collector was a mistake. One of our ginger brutes unblockable. Swing in the air, get a little bit of life back. All right, now our Johnny's pride mate's a nice 5-5, uh, five, five, so we can block the scalp scroll spellbreaker. Sunder shot. Okay. With two red. I'm guessing they're holding up a uh, Bone Crusher Giant. So if we block Spellbreaker, we're dead. But then that would also kill our Pride Mate. So I think we can take it. Land. I think we just keep attacking with our flyers and then hold up the ginger brutes to a uh, jump block. We'll grow our pride mate to a uh, 7 7. And then we can uh, spectral sailor to draw a card. And 
Hopefully we can find a staggering insight, something like that. So, so far no enchantments, our opponent might not be able to sideboard correctly against us. Glamour Shaman, okay. Choose the counter. Opponent's empty-handed, so we can block whatever we want. I think we want to get rid of the Sunder Shaman. And the Ghoul Spellbreaker has Trample, so we'll just chump the Living Twister since our life total is getting a little low. And draw a card. Here's our staggering insight. Okay, we're one land away from being able to play both of these. If we draw uh, the Clamor Shaman can make it so that one of our creatures can't block. Except they will need to block with it. So we're going to gain four life here. It's still a little risky. I think we just attack with our flyers. We draw Mix Herald. Hmm. I think I'd rather just play out the 1 1 as a chump blocker. And if things are desperate, we can always sack those Ginger Brute to gain some life. We can always block and uh, sack it as well. Burning Tree Vandal, right? Going haste, okay. Opponent's gonna go all in. And I'm assuming they're gonna target our pride mate. But can't block. Okay. So Spellbreaker. Yeah, that's a pretty easy block. Block the three there. And I think we'll gain the life just because. And they're dead next turn. They were trying to Living Twister, but you have to have a land in hand to activate its ability. I don't know if our opponent realized that that was a uh, lethal attack. As in lethal for them. Spectral Sailor Trample. And let's finish him off. Alright, so we hung in there against a uh, gruel sort of mid rangey deck. All right, our opponent saying oops at the end, so I guess they. Uh, I don't know what that means if they realize they shouldn't have attacked with everything. Ginger Brute can swing through all of their stuff, but feels pretty vulnerable. Cerulean Drake can block, since they seem like they're mostly on red creatures. The 
do have a hasty, a lot of hasty boys, so maybe uh, taking out the brazen borrowers. Bouncing them back to their hand isn't great. I'd rather just have a way to kill them in the first place. Vanishing light is decent. Just trying to figure out if we want to make some room for return to nature somehow. We didn't see uh, we didn't see Embercleave. They seem like they may be on more of a budget list, but probably bringing at least one in just to kind of hedge our bets. Breeding pool. We can play our spectral sailor, but not gonna keep. Seems fine, and we'll put a Banishing Light to the bottom since we already have one. And we'll get our Drake down on turn two. A little Fabled Passage. Grab... There's another green source. Zerta Goblin. Get in for that damage while you can. Uh, I guess we'll go green. Of course, we found green anyway. Need a blue down for the Serene Drake. So now we can block their uh, goblin all day. And then we can Pride Mate next turn, unless they play something scary that we want to banish light for some reason. Collector, not too worried about that yet. Obviously, Gruel going first gives them a huge advantage. We'll uh, play it nice and slow here. <clears throat> Let's get our Pride Mate down and leave our Sulian Drake back on blocks. Hushbringer put in a lot of work last game, so we'd definitely love to see that. Okay, taking our Pride Mate. We'll block the three. Another land. Well, no point in holding on to this Banishing Light. We need to deal with this uh, Drake. Or, excuse me, the Zerta Goblin. See uh, if our opponent has any other hasty threats. Keep our Sulian Drake back on blocks. Frenzied Oryx. Okay, has trample, so we can go right through our Sulian Drake. And all these lands are uh, not looking too good for our case. Our opponent not. Attacking for some reason. Say go. And yeah, we're pretty much dead at this point. The only way to interact with all these uh, trample. Surely and Drake can block some of their other creatures that we saw without taking damage, but the protection means our creature doesn't take damage and the trample just goes right through and kills us. Alright, so we're still not seeing Embercleave, so they might not uh, have that kind of stuff. So let's just bring in these Gideon Triumphs, some more instant speed interaction. And I hope that's good enough. Obviously drawing all those lands didn't help. Gruel going first is never a good thing for you. 
So now we're on the uh, <clears throat> we're on the plane, and yeah, I think we'll uh, get our spectral sailor in again and hushbringer. We can hold on to this giant killer for uh, instant speed removal. Stomping ground for our opponent. And maybe just to preserve our life total, we'll go Heather's Hawk and then play. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll put the breeding pool down. I should, probably should have played Temple there. It's alright. Just a Hushbringer and Temple next turn, and then we'll have a Giant Killer open the following turn, which is when they'll be in range. Four powered creatures. So our opponent not playing anything, so that's a little scary. No reason to think they were playing the Sweepers before. But the fact they haven't dropped anything is a little all right we'll just uh, play out our hushbringer since it shuts down some of their riot creatures so i'm guessing they're not holding up Sweepers are just holding up a bunch of three and four drops. Maybe some Domery's ambushes that they're not able to cast because they don't have any creatures in play yet. And if that's the case, then we can uh, go to town with these creatures on board. Yeah, the Hushbringer and Hero Sock already have lifelink, so let's just. Uh, Enchant our Spectral Sailor. Go to combat first, see what we draw. Gained four life. Alright, let's get the shock land in. And say go. Uh oh, our opponent continued to miss land drops. Okay, so they were holding some kind of instant spell, it seemed like. And if they don't have interaction for our Spectral Sailor, then this uh, enchantment is going to... That's exactly what it's there for. Just like that, our 1-1 one, one is now a 6-6 six, six lifelinking card draw machine. There we go, there's our land drop from our opponent, but it is too little too late. Living Twister cannot deal with all the flying creatures we have. And then we'll just crash in. Alright, so a little bit of a misfortune from our opponent. But typical for a low to the ground aggro deck, we were able to punish them big time. Alright, so just want to give you guys a quick uh, taste for how this deck works. Maybe you can give it a try for yourself. Alright, thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Take care.